Hey, I'm Adam James, and you might not know that I have a Twitch stream where I do some live closure programming and occasionally some other stuff, like I've played uh, some games on there before and I've done some drawing, that sort of thing. I put the link on, <laughs> on screen here, and if you don't know about it, go check it out and uh, give it a follow. There's also a link in the description for the VOD channel, so if you can't watch live, you can check things out on uh, that YouTube channel there. This video here is actually a uh, edited down explanation I gave to a follower about the kind of stuff I'm doing with closure and computer-aided design. I thought it was a pretty good explanation I gave and this is indicative of the kind of stuff that you can see on the stream. I also want to briefly bring up the idea that with a little bit of additional support, I can actually start to make videos on a more frequent basis. So if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, you can check out my Patreon link and consider uh, becoming a patron. And this is early days of the channel on Twitch and on YouTube. So if you're interested in growing and shaping the community and the content, that might be something worth checking out. So give these links a look and enjoy this video. Hey, uh, Na Namlas too. what is CAD? Oh yeah, that's a fair question. So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. Typically you'll see CAD in the context of like 3D modeling and stuff like that. That's what this refers to. This here, this is a 3D model that I was just making yesterday. It's a 3D model of my mic stand. Uh, so Computer Aided Design refers to uh, 2D, 3D modeling for the purpose of doing builds and stuff like that, usually anyway. So what is the correlation between Clojure and CAD? That's an excellent question. I can actually answer that for you. Here is um, a program called OpenSCAD, OpenScriptCAD. Let's see, view, here we go. So this 3D model's here, and it's generated actually by this uh, chunk of code. Now this itself is not closure, but there is, um, if I open up a different design file here, I have um, this design file here, and this particular section of code is actually the code that generates the mic stand 3D model. What I do is write this closure code here, and it runs and emits open SCAD code. So this is closure code. These here are different defs of different shapes. So this mic stand adjuster thing is all of these various things. It emits a closure data structure and then it ends up uh, transpiling, compiling if you want to call it that, to uh, this OpenSCAD. So I'm going to pop these both on the same screen for a second. If you bear with me, I can make this look a little neater and I will show you what the deal is. Okay, so we've got the model here and the closure here. Let me assume you wanna have a look at only the adjuster. Let's isolate that and we'll, we'll simply comment out the other bits here. Save that and suddenly you see the models changed and you can actually uh, see that the closure code is directly related to the model that you see. Now the final connection here, so I have FreeCAD in the title there. FreeCAD is another open source CAD modeling software. Before I continue, apologize for interrupting. Never apologize for interrupting, that's totally cool, no problem. Uh, did I write the code or have it generated via creating the model? Code that I wrote is the closure code. I'm gonna simplify this down with a, a, an even more straightforward to follow example, okay? The code I write is stuff like this, sphere 20. Save that, and a sphere is generated. So what's going on here? The only code I've written so far, if we ignore the commented out sections, this sphere here is the code I've written, okay? And if I go and look at OpenSCAD, uh, where are we at here? Sorry, let me, there we go. If you look here, the code I wrote, sphere 20, you did write the code first. Yeah, I wrote the closure code, and then it emits 
the open SCAD code. So this here, <laughs> the window on <laughs> the left of the screen is written by me. The code here, kind of in the middle of the screen, is not written by me. It is the output of the closure program. Uh, you can see it change. Uh, let's say I change this to 40. You can see the model change, and you see the code output here change as well. So thought you would have used some 3D modeling program and had the code generated from it. You did it all writing the code. You have seen it, but you didn't know you could create 3D models like that. Yeah, it was actually a surprising uh, discovery for me a few years ago as well. Uh, so the general term I've been using to describe this kind of workflow, I call it, and, and I'm, I'm not sure there's like a official term for it, but I you typically use the word programmatic CAD, as in the primary tool for communicating the design intent is actually code. Sorry, I realize I'm looking um, off screen here. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, I, I moved my camera to a different spot than I'm used to, so I'm looking at the wrong spots. Apologies for that. What's the benefit of doing it like this? You, you know what, I realize I am gonna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the mic directly in front of my face, and I think that's perfect. <laughs> Obviously not, that's, that was, that's ridiculous. Okay, but I will do this, because now I'm kind of, when I'm reading, when I'm reading the chat, now I'm more closely aligned. It, it's flawless. <laughs> All right, bear with me, sorry about that. Okay, so what's your question here? That is quite cool. What's the benefits of doing it like this? That's a great question. Came because of the face, stayed for the content. <laughs> well, thank you. I grew this face myself. <laughs> oh, thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. Okay, so here, let me answer your question. What is the benefit of doing it like this? That's a really good question. And I'll preface this whole thing by saying, I don't view this as a replacement for using graphical modeling approaches. I use the I view this more as a uh, additional tool in the uh, quote unquote tool belt. Um, the thing that I try to express quickly is programmatic CAD is really good for those little bits of a 3D model that you don't want to manually create every single time. Something like a bolt would be a really simple example where a bolt has the same kind of idea behind it, right? Like uh, a bolt for, you, you, it's got some threads, it's got a certain diameter, it's got a certain head type. But the concept, I want a threaded rod to, to clamp something to something else is basically equivalent no matter what. It's just a matter of sizing and tool attachment. If you could write a program that is called bolt and the only thing the user has to do is specify I want a an M5 bolt hex head and it automatically puts that in the model for you suddenly you have one single file that can generate all possible bolts practically speaking there would be uh, you, you might ha it, there might be some quirks about how you actually want to do that, but that's the basics. So it's quick to replicate different variations of models, yes. And this as well is not a fully new idea. The term used in professional CAD environments is parametric modeling a little bit. A high level outcome of more complicated versions of this idea are uh, things called product configurators. Configurator is another word that you might hear related to these kind of concepts. So I've used SolidWorks before in uh, designing stuff. And so this idea does exist within that a little bit. The nice thing about doing it all purely in code is it's really small file sizes. It's really easy for people to edit without any special program. They just need a text editor, technically speaking. And um, text versus graphical interfaces can sometimes actually be a little more concise and detailed with the needed explanations. So this is surely a case by case kind of thing, but I find uh, programmatic CAD to be a really nice way to use open source tools 
uh, to create cool models. You know, maybe can, can I actually put a little more substance behind what I'm saying? I'm trying to think of another model that would be good to show you an example of. And actually, if I think about it, I'm going to try dig through my files and show you one that is a little closer to a real world example that I personally am quite proud of and excited by as ideas. So, so a friend of mine and I built a, a hydroponic system out of PVC pipe and we, I kind of for fun made a hydroponic model of it. Sorry, I, I need to uh, remember where my files are. <laughs> You know, are you familiar with that problem? I have that problem a lot. <laughs> oh, I guess I will take my time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I'm trying to rush around. I just, the actually, the real truth about it is this: these ideas excite me a lot. So it's fun to, it, it's fun for me to kind of show the ideas. This here, design.cljc, is the closure source. I'm gonna turn on the file watcher, and the file watcher is a closure namespace that will um, run the compiler every time the design file changes. So I just have it running in the background and it will output out.scad. Sorry, did you ask how I ended up on your stream? Oh yeah, um, I did. Um, don't You don't have to answer if you're not, if you don't want to, but like you, you came in and asked about CAD. So I'm actually wondering, I have the words CAD enclosure in my description i am a little curious what were <laughs> what uh background is more like initially brought you in if that makes sense because i do find closure is a bit of a niche language and closure and cad together are kind of an even smaller niche so i'm just kind of curious in general what uh, brought you around just a programmer nice nothing wrong with being a programmer notice closure and notice i mentioned cad yeah, so <laughs> the natural question is, what's the deal? <laughs> do you use Clojure a lot yourself? I do find more often than not people tune in because of the Clojure aspect of things. I think it's a, um, it's a language that kind of gets people curious, you know, even if they don't use it necessarily. You're not familiar with Clojure, but somewhat familiar with functional programming. Gotcha, gotcha. Well... Obviously, I'm a bit biased, but if you ever have like the desire to just poke around in other languages, give closure like a give closure like a half hour shot. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it a lot. Uh, maybe half hour is a little bit short. If you're gonna do thirty minutes, do closure script in the web browser. But I digress. If if you're interested in it at all, I'd say take that plunge. It's it's fun. I enjoy it a lot. Hey, Commander Thrashton gave me a raid. I just noticed that now. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Mike, how's it going? Yeah, Thrashton, um, Common Lisp is on the long list of languages I'd really love to be proficient at. And the literal only reason I, I don't try all those languages is... Um, I don't know if you notice, I can get distracted pretty easily. So I need to, I need to force myself to focus a little bit, you know? So it's on the someday list. <laughs> all right, I'm trying to remember in my brain box how I did all of this. Hey Mike, uh, saw that you tuned in, didn't answer your question. How are we doing today? I'm doing really well. I hope you're doing well there, Mike. New follower, uh, Namlas, was asking about how Clojure and CAD related. So I was given the little whirlwind spiel about that, trying to explain or showcase um, something a little more substantive than a sphere. I think my actual least favorite thing about streaming is trying to get screen name pronunciations correct. Um, I don't like trying to guess it because I don't want to um, make an obvious error. And I also don't want to like totally butcher someone's pronunciation, right? Because it's, it's nice when you can say things correctly. <laughs> That's that's like the thing I like the least, and it's not so bad as things go. <laughs> don't think people mind all that much. You're probably right. I, I don't know why I worry so much about it. I think it's probably not nearly as big of a uh, issue as it is in my own brain. I mean, I, it's the only brain I've got, so I'll you know what? I'll just have to learn to work with it, being a goose here. 
It's the polite Canadianness in me. <laughs> we'll go with that, sure. Wrong number of arguments one passed to the watcher. What's what's going on now? What's the deal? <sighs> Let's see here. Let's see. Hey, Green Coder, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. And now let's just pull out this example and I'll uh, I'll show you what's up. This is a little more substantive, a little more indicative of the kind of stuff that I would love to work on more thoroughly. Here we go. So this is a, a so as models go, not too complicated. I'll fully admit it's it's mostly just tubes with holes in them. But hey, it's a good start. And the cooler thing about this model, right? This is actually, this is representative of the prototype that we made. So I don't know if you're familiar with hydroponics at all, but these uh, black baskets here, you put a uh, growing substrate in there and then you plant kale or spinach or whatever in there. And you get a pump down in the base. You pump water mixed with nutrient through a tube up here into this whole tube it fills up uh, to well about the halfway line and you let water flow through there past around the baskets so then the um, the roots of whatever you're growing can can nicely soak up whatever water and nutrient they need and you leave the pump running the whole time it's pretty quiet and so you run it through the top here then there's another tube connecting it I, I say two, but it should be hose connecting it. Then you flow water down through this one and then down through this one. So this prototype we built onto an existing shelf. This is uh, two by four pieces of wood with a V slot cut out, uh, not modeled on there, but we had a wire strap uh, that we just screwed down onto there with a bit of rubber pad so that the PVC didn't twist. Uh, hole saw cut a bunch of holes in there and glue the caps on the ends and thread some brass fittings into the side the ends here very rather straightforward but now the reason that this is a cool thing to model and a really good example of what modeling with a program is is good for is um if i open up the model itself here and i open up this thing here i have a closure map that i just named parameters Okay, so let's change this levels to four and see what happens. So I saved the file, and if you look right here, now you can Im see almost immediately the change reflected in the model, right? I didn't have to do anything. It, it, In this case, it's super simple, right? It's just a new instance, nothing crazy at all. Let's change this gap value here. I don't remember what it changes. Okay, so we've got a vertical gap changing right there. Uh, you can see I put a little bit of structure into this. You've got the assembly level parameters, you've got the tube parameters, the cap, the basket, and the stand parameters. So all of that changes rather quickly once you've got the model all quote-unquote wired up nicely, right? And you can imagine, since this is a general purpose programming language, you can effectively come up with whatever relations you want between parameters. I think that's really cool. I can't even think of all the possibilities, right? That's the thing. There's so, <laughs> you've got this wide open space to work in and you can kind of do a whole lot. At the same time, it's really nice because it's a simple, it's a rather simple thing. It You generate primitive solids, you do translates and rotates, you do additions and differences, and you've got extrude and rotate of 2D shapes. It's like 3D modeling for CAD is if you really break it down, not too complicated, to be completely honest, which is a super nice thing as well. Systems that give you a, a set of well-working, simple tools really lets you build things up from the ground up. Imagine you live in a smaller apartment or something and you don't have the same tube length. It adjusts the number of baskets available right away. You could take this idea even further, right? Let's say you can see a physical design flaw of a system like this might be, I would actually want a third support for this tube in the middle here, otherwise at certain lengths you're going to get the tube sagging, right? This is just simple mechanical design. You don't want, <laughs> you want to be able to support things across a long length so that they maintain the uh, rigidity that they need. So you could change up the way the stand copies itself, right? If, if the total length of the tube is mod 
whatever number add an additional uh, support somewhere in the middle right you can you can add that kind of thinking you can even start to do things like if I know the pump pressure of the pump that I have automatically give me the total like the longest tube length that I could pump with 50% energy usage or whatever right like I, I want something where the pump is working at capacity without being burnt out and uh, what's the longest tube if I have 10 tubes high with the pressure of pump that I have so you can you can come up with uh, more and more abstract relations if you want to anyway this is this is a little ridiculous here right but that's that's the idea that's uh, that's why programmatic CAD is so intriguing to me as a as a method and the cool thing is when we're talking about going to industry um, free CAD now this is back to a different model I was working on sorry there we go uh, you can actually take the code you generate, run it through a FreeCAD converter that I'm working on, and uh, save this out to a step file, which is a CAD neutral format that's pretty standard in industry. The goal is not to replace a human designer in the manufacturing process. The goal is to do 80% of the modeling work for your design team because it's like 80% of the models that you make for a lot of products are gonna be the same or so close to the same that it's basically mindless work and then the last 20% are things that your sales team promised or new features that you're trying to work on or whatever right there okay well uh, the shed I want to build it's all totally normal except that it's on a cliff that's this steep okay well the top part of the shed the designs already done but we need to spend a lot of time designing the post so that the thing will sit on your cliff for or whatever right point being manufacturing a lot of stuff is the same but there's almost always something that's different and so you want to focus on your time and effort on the thing that's different and make the stuff that's the same as trivial as possible. That's the high level idea behind all this sort of effort. The, the thing I like about this too is I'm using open source tools and I want to keep this stuff open source, right? So oftentimes there will be people who have really fun ideas or they want to try design a thing, but they might not have access to these the same tools uh, for modeling and you know, simple open source tools that you can grab off, off the internet they're pretty nice, or they can be anyway. I like that hacker maker kind of mentality, right? This seems like it'll fit right into that kind of category as well. These are my dreams. <laughs>